welcome adventurers. Say, what's that over there? Or, or over there? Hmm. I'm not sure what's going on here, but then again, I don't have to be. My GM does. They have to tell me everything because I am an investigator. Welcome to Rebel Then King. Today, we're talking about the other intelligence-based martial class. One video after I said there's only one. Sorry about that inventor, I lied. Today, we're talking about the investigator. All right, the basics of the investigator. They are an intelligence-based class. They are trained in simple and martial weapons, but they do only have light armor proficiency. They have eight hit points per level and are trained into a number of skills equal to four plus their intelligence modifier, which is their key ability score. So, man, that's going to be a lot of skill training. There are four subclasses, which are called methodologies. You have alchemical sciences, empiricism, forensic medicine, and interrogation. So you can see the investigator is a pretty light marshal with a lot of skill training and, well, a lot of exploration bonuses, which we're going to look at now. So the cool thing about the investigator is I think they are actually the only class, I dare say, that is entirely exploration focused. Typically when we do these videos, we're talking about mechanics that are combat mechanics. How hard you can hit, how accurately you can hit, uh, how can you use battlefield control or buffs or debuffs, those kinds of things. That's not really what the investigator is all about. To start off with, they have a lot of passive bonuses to exploration, beginning with all of those skills. They are going to be skills monkey, which means they are going to be able to recall knowledge about everything. And they're also experts in perception to begin with, which is super helpful for noticing things around you. The first active thing an investigator can do to help out in exploration is use the class feature called pursue a lead. Now, the way this works, you first take a minute to review a lead, like a description of someone or an article of clothing or a letter that they wrote, and, well, you make them the target of your investigation. You can do this for two leads at a time, and once you do, you gain a plus one circumstance bonus to recall knowledge about that target of your investigation. That's pretty nice. And once you have used Pursue a Lead, you can now use the Clue In reaction, which is another cool class feat. Basically, you do the same thing, except now you can help your allies with a plus one circumstance bonus to their recall knowledge checks against the target of your investigation. So maybe you are pursuing an occultist and you're just not trained in occultism, but someone else in your party is. Well, that other person in your party can make a recall knowledge check. And as long as you have marked that, you know, target as the target of your investigation, well, you give that plus one circumstance bonus to your ally. Basically, if you are playing with an investigator, you kind of have a plus one bonus to recall knowledge about the main uh, storyline of your party. That's really handy. And then on top of those generic class feats, each subclass, each methodology does of course have its own bonuses. Starting with alchemical sciences, which is kind of like being a, a baby alchemist in a way, though you are limited in which alchemical items you can make, but you can make elixirs, which does include things like the silver tongue mutagen. I checked it has both the mutagen and elixir trait, so I think it's still technically an elixir. And that can make you, well, good at talking. That's great for exploration. With empiricism, you get that's odd and expeditious inspection. These are insane. These are overpowered. That's odd. I won't go into the mechanics in too much detail, but basically when you walk into a room, your GM has to tell you something about it. Can you imagine how helpful that would be? And then expeditious inspection is like an automatic behind the scenes recall knowledge, seek or sense motive every 10 minutes. Again, it's just something that your GM has to do on their own and then tell you about. 
With forensic medicine, you get a bonus to inspect bodies, which happens a lot in Pathfinder. You often come across a crime scene or the aftermath of some combat and you're trying to figure out what happened. If you have a forensic medicine investigator, it's going to be a lot easier. And then finally, uh, you've got the interrogation methodology with their pointed question feature. And this is a bit complex, so to kind of sum it up, um, you ask someone a question and they have to give you an answer and you absolutely know if they're lying to you. Yeah, that's nice. And really what this comes down to is that the investigator can help you move your story along. Like, a lot. I found that in a lot of campaigns, you do get a little bit like bogged down in fact finding, I would say, where you are just kind of struggling with what to do next to make the story advance. You're talking to a bunch of people, you're trying to put the pieces together, and you just can't do it. I mean, it's happened a lot in the campaigns I've played. It's, I think, a result of the fact that most characters are built for combat. So when you get in those outside of combat situations, you kind of don't know what to do. I think an investigator is the fix to this problem. However, where the investigator excels in exploration, I think they really, really fail in combat. In fact, I dare say their combat bonus devise a stratagem is the worst combat mechanic in the game. Okay, first let's talk about the way that devise a stratagem is supposed to work. First, for one action, you make an attack roll, not an attack, just the roll against an enemy. When doing so, you can apply your intelligence modifier rather than your strength or dexterity, which is good because you're intelligence based. This will only work if you are holding an agile or finesse weapon or making a unarmed strike or are using a ranged weapon. Uh, no actual attack happens. It is just one action to sort of figure out what your next move is going to be. Now, as a second action, you can actually make that attack. You don't re-roll, you just use the roll from your first action and you strike. If this hits, you get to apply an extra d6 of damage. So that's the way it is supposed to work, but here are some of the things I've actually seen listening to podcasts or playing alongside investigators. Roll devise a stratagem, Decide you didn't like the roll and make a regular attack instead. You can't do that. The rules say you have to use the roll from devise a stratagem if you're attacking that same creature. Roll devise a stratagem, land a hit, and apply your intelligence modifier rather than your strength to damage. That's incorrect. You still use strength for your damage roll. Intelligence is only for the attack roll. Roll devise a stratagem in order to make a spell attack roll. Well, a spell is not an agile or finesse weapon or unarmed attack, and it's also not a ranged weapon, so this doesn't work with the devise a stratagem rules. I have seen roll devise a stratagem and make an attack in one action. That would be great, but it takes twice as many actions. It is devise a stratagem as your first action, actually attack as your second. Uh, combining some previous mistakes, I've seen people use devise a stratagem multiple times per round. Not only is this not possible if you're doing the actions correctly, because it's one action to devise a stratagem, another action to make a strike, and then you would need you know two more to repeat that, uh, but the rules actually say you can only devise a stratagem once per round, so it's kind of doubly wrong. And then I've also just seen investigators, you know, never use devise a stratagem, like at all, which honestly might be the right way. And with so many different interpretations, I don't blame the players, I blame the rules. If you have something that people can get so wrong time and time again, it's not all of their faults, it's the rules fault. It's just too complicated, too cumbersome, and when no one gets it right, you know, there's something wrong about it. The other probably bigger issue that I have with Devise the Stratagem is it's simply not that good. For one extra action, you get an extra D6 damage. One action, one D6. That's not really that good. 
You compare that to like a barbarian who's gonna get four, maybe six points of extra damage per strike after taking one action at the beginning of combat. One action, six extra points of damage, every strike for the rest of combat. That is way better. Uh, maybe a better comparison is comparing to the rogue. A rogue also does an extra D6 precision damage, exact same type that the investigator does, except they can do this anytime they make a strike against a flat-footed creature, which could be all three strikes in a round if they're in a flanking position. When you combine that with the fact that the investigator is intelligence-based, and has to use agile finesse weapons and uses light armor, it basically means they're going to be high intelligence, high dexterity, low strength. Low strength means low damage. So you are doing a low damage, one-handed attack, and sometimes applying an extra D6, and that's the only attack you are gonna be able to get in in a round. It's not good. Again, I have to repeat, I do think it is the weakest, worst, clunkiest martial mechanic in the entire game. So there we have it. I know that is a wild mood swing. We go from the best at exploration to the worst at combat, the investigator. They really do fill a niche that like no other class does. And they are so, 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 so good at exploration. Now that I think of it, that could save you in combat a bit. I mean, knowing a lot about your enemy before you fight them, yeah, that's really helpful. And depending on your campaign, if you are doing a fact-finding, exploration, mystery-heavy campaign, they really could be the best character you've got. But I don't know, considering that so much of Pathfinder is about combat, I have to give the investigator just five out of 10 botched interpretations of Devise a Stratagem. But do you disagree? Have you seen Devise a Stratagem work well? If so, let me know in the comments because I'll be honest, I'm dubious. Until then, keep your head on a swivel, keep your eyes open so that you can, actually so that your GM can just point out everything to you and just have to do it because that's the way your character works. Honestly, it's, it's overpowered in exploration. It is nice. Maybe I should give an investigator a better score. Nah, I can't do it. I'm, I'm sorry. Five out of 10, that's what you get.